Hi everybody. Um, my name is Alyssa and I know, um, you're probably thinking, what are you doing sitting in your car in a parking lot? Um, telling this story, your coming out story in a car. Um, but in my car last year at around this exact time, I was in a parking lot in my car and Googling, I'm 29 years old, engaged to a guy, and I'm in love with a woman. Um, and very few videos came up. I saw one video of a girl that came up right away for me and she married a guy and had kids and then um, ended up getting divorced because she fell in love with the woman and now um, she's been dating that woman for a very long time. But for me, it was a little different because I was engaged. Um, I wasn't married, I didn't have kids, I kind of didn't relate exactly to everything that was in her video. And in her um, story, she had also had feelings for women in the past when she was younger. Um, where for me, I didn't have feelings for a woman until I was 29 years old in a yoga teacher training. <laughs> um, so, I know the feeling um, of sitting in your car in a parking lot and Googling, help, I'm 29 years old and I'm engaged to a guy and in love with a woman and I don't know what to do. And uh, I just wanna know there's somebody else out there who has been through this or um, can maybe help me out. So the answer with can I help you out is, well, kind of, but you really just have to listen to your own self and kind of dig as deep as you can into your heart and um, just really, really listen to yourself because nobody else is going to have the answer for you. I can help you by sharing my story, um, but it's because really I listened and trusted to what I knew needed to happen. Um, so here it goes. In June of 2019, I was a train wreck. Even though I was engaged, I was living in California, in LA. Um, I had an adorable little apartment that I shared with my fiance. Um, I was a struggling actress, but I was getting little jobs here and there. So I was acting, I was doing what I always wanted to do or what I thought I always wanted to do. Um, and I did parties and events for a candy store. So I had a pretty awesome, um, life going on. But for some reason, I felt miserable. And I felt like something was really wrong. And I couldn't figure out why all the things that I always thought I wanted, suddenly I didn't want anymore. Um, and that was really hard. And I'll never forget driving down Hollywood Boulevard, coming home from an event one night, it was like one in the morning. And I was seeing all the lights on the Hollywood Hills. And when I first moved to California, I remember it feeling so magical. And um, just thinking, oh my God, I can't believe this is my life. And then five years later, I was completely miserable and a mess and had everything that I could have wanted. And I was probably the unha most unhappy I'd ever been. I loved yoga though, and I started practicing yoga years ago, but when I moved to LA, I had really gotten involved with it. Um, and it hit me almost like a lightning bolt the one night when I was in my car that I had to be a yoga teacher. So I knew in that moment, I was gonna go home, get on the computer and find a yoga training that was happening hopefully somewhat soon so I went home, I Googled every yoga studio you could probably imagine in LA. Um, and the only yoga studio 
that had a training that would happen in two weeks from this day was core power yoga in Pasadena. Um, and everyone else wasn't going to start till February. And I was like, well, I can't wait till then because by that time I'll be having like my bachelorette party and bridal showers. And I was supposed to be getting married in June of 2020. So all of my parties and showers were going to probably be around sometime in February as I had lived my home where my family was, was across the country. Um, so I was like, I'm going to do core power yoga. So I literally signed up that night. Um, and then I went and I took a core power class. I had never taken a class at core power, but I was like, Hey, I heard it's really great. And I'm just going to do it. So I went and, um, the girl that taught my first core power class, I found out at the end of class was going to be the head trainer of my program. And immediately when I met her, I was like, oh wow, like I have a lot in common with this girl. Like we were very, very similar. We had very similar personalities. We had a lot in common based on like what we were talking about um, when we were talking about the training and our backgrounds. Um, and I thought this is gonna be just so incredible. And she has such great energy. It's gonna be awesome. Didn't think anything of it. So I start the uh, training program in June and it was awesome. And everyone's like, this is going to be so life changing. And I thought, oh yeah, right. Like I, I'm just doing this because I, I want to be a yoga teacher. I want to get out of doing retail and parties and events. And I just want to do my acting jobs and then be able to teach yoga to make money. But I didn't think anything of it. So time goes on. I am completely falling in love with yoga, with studying um, myself. Um, what's really interesting about yoga training is part of it is self-study. Um, and I have been an actress since I was in seventh grade, um, up until I was 29 years old. And so my whole life, I had studied other people, even as a little kid, I would just observe other people and want to be other people. Like I'd want to play other people. Um, so I had studied people so distinctly. Um, and I think while it made me a great artist um, and it made me a pretty awesome actress, um, while I was studying all these other people and creating characters and working on creating characters, I really had neglected to ever study myself until this yoga training. Um, I came from a really small town in Pennsylvania. Um, I went to a performing arts high school, so I had a ton of gay friends. I was always surrounded by the gay community. My best friends were always gay boys. My, my best friends are still gay boys. Um, and the thing is though, even though I was in performing arts high school, I didn't really know any lesbians. Um, and the lesbians I did know, I just didn't, like I didn't see, I wasn't like, oh, I'm just like her. Like I couldn't have been more opposite of any of the lesbians that I knew. And all I knew about lesbians is as horrible as this is gonna sound are like really bad stereotypes. Um, which is like, now I am so like driven to try and get, um, you know, more visibility out there, um, for, uh, the queer community because, um, so much of what we see or what we don't see is, is what we associate. And so being raised in a very suburban small town where I didn't know any lesbian women really um and I grew up you know watching Disney movies and I grew up in the 90s and early 2000s so it was there was no one really on TV or in movies or um even in the plays I would do where I connected or um had that so it never even crossed my mind to date a woman ever um but back to the yoga just wanted to throw that in there just so you know like a little backstory but um, 
So halfway through the yoga training, my uh, the one girl, um, I'm not gonna say names, but she knows who she is and she's cool with it. Um, she uh, went away. She was one of the teachers and uh, maybe I think three years older than me. Um, she went away for the 4th of July and she was gone for a few days. And I remember being in my apartment and missing her. Like I was like, wow, I really, I really miss her. And I didn't, like it was weird. It was like, like I really missed her. Like I was, her presence and her energy and it, it was like a deep thing. Like it was like a deep missing her kind of a thing. And I was like, this, this is odd. And, but I didn't think about it too much. I was like, whatever. Then time went on and time went on and time went on. And I fell in love with this girl. Um, and nothing happened because I did not want to cheat on my partner. I didn't want to, I thought it would be extremely unfair to him, especially because I had not told him yet about these feelings I had. Um, and I just, I, there was no way in my heart I could do that. Um, but it was so excruciatingly painful. If you've ever watched The L Word, there's this scene where Jenny, um, like she's in her bed next to her boyfriend and she's just like, she turns over and she's just like silently crying because she's in this pain, really internal pain because she can't, she feels like she's stuck, like she's trapped um, with this new piece of herself that she's found. And it's like, what do I do? <laughs> um, so eventually what, what I would recommend is you just have to tell the truth. You just have to be honest, but it starts with being honest with yourself. Um, August 19th of last year, I had my moment where I said, I am a gay woman. I am a lesbian. And I said it out loud as I looked outside. Of, we had this big window in our apartment. I was home alone. And um, I was standing at the window. The sun was setting. And it was, you know, those beautiful California sunsets. And I stood there. And then I walked over to my sofa, I sat on the arm of it, and I looked in the mirror, and I really saw myself. And it wasn't my exterior, it was like I saw my soul. Like I saw me, like who I am. And at that point, my jaw literally dropped and I was like, I'm gay. I'm a lesbian. I'm gay. And it was, and it sounds so ridiculous that I was like, so like, I was like excited. I started jumping around my apartment, like being like, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay. Like I, and how, and then, and, I, and then I was like, duh, how did I not, how did I not see this? How did I not put this together? I never had a boyfriend in my entire life. No guy ever wanted to be with me. Like, and I thought there was something wrong with me. Like I had dated so many, like casually dated so many guys, right? Like I was like in New York city, when I lived in New York, I was like going on dates all the time. Like it was nuts. And if you asked anybody who knew me in New York, they were like, Oh my God, Alyssa, <laughs> well, who are you going out with tonight? And I was always attracted to very kind of feminine men, um, which is something I realized um, as all this was unfolding. I was like, wow, 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 okay, okay. And I started to put pieces together. Um, something that helped me realize this part of myself too was, um, we did a chakra meditation in yoga and it goes through all your seven chakras, my chakra necklace. And this one down here is the root chakra, which is connected to, you know, your tribal, um, all your, your, your grounding, your support, where you come from. Um, and basically anything that you ever try to push down, even if you don't realize you're pushing something down, when you do this work on yourself and you do these chakra meditations, it will come up 
and it will all boil to the surface and it will sh like be like whoosh. um and what's crazy is during this chakra meditation i did see glimpses of things from like high school um like there was this one girl who i who was in my theater class who i would be so nervous around and I thought she was just so beautiful and I couldn't talk to her. Like I couldn't like form a sentence, which was very weird because I'm not a shy person at all. And especially in high school, I was like, Wah! and um, it was very hard for me to be friends with her. And then I looked and I thought, how did I, like, I never really had like a best girlfriend that I like truly connected with. Like my best friends that I truly connected with were were gay boys gay men um those were like my connections that and still are my connections that I'm just so like you know so tight with and um so that all came up and they kept coming up and coming up and I was like oh my god so that August 19th when I was in my apartment by myself before my ex-fiance came home I was like holy shit I, it was like this excitement and then it went from excitement to complete what I call gay panic <laughs> because then I was like oh my god I knew all the conversations that were gonna have to follow this moment you know I was gonna have to come out to him I was gonna have to call off my wedding I already had a wedding dress I had a serum I had a DJ, I had, I mean, I was getting ready to send the save the dates out. And I specifically remember my mom calling me and saying, this was literally the day after this happened, being like, well, you really need to send the save the dates out. Like, I just, I feel like I'm doing everything for this wedding. And, you know, you're not really, you know, excited about it or want to do anything, which was partially true. Um, but all I could think of when she was saying, you know, send the save the dates out was, oh my God, I couldn't stop thinking about the girl. I just was so in love with her. And that's all I could think of was her. <laughs> even though we hadn't even, you know, we hadn't kissed. We hadn't gone out alone. alone. You know, we hadn't done anything, but we had this connection um, and everybody could see it, you know, in the class, everybody could knew that we had, there was just something. Um, and, uh, the, I'll never forget the end of our last class. We were going around and she was like, Alyssa and I were definitely together in a past life. So you get what I mean? Like, it was just that. And especially like, this is another thing. Um, I had never been touched by a woman that I had a strong emotional connection to. And in the yoga training, you make really strong emotional connections. You are telling people um, very personal things about you and you're sharing and you're all on this journey together with each other. Um, and when we were learning hands-on adjustments and like massage and that kind of a thing, the touch part of yoga, I had been getting to know these girls for a while. I didn't feel anything else for any of the girls in the class, but then again, I didn't have that connection like I had with this one specific girl. But when this girl would, you know, touch me or use me as an example in class, I could not stop thinking about it. I just didn't want anybody else but her to touch me. Like it, nothing else felt right. It was like, oh, this is what it's supposed to feel like. Like this is what's supposed to like, I'm, what I'm emotionally supposed to feel. I was connecting to my mind, body, and soul. It wasn't just like my body or just like my mind. It was like everything was connecting. And I was like, oh, wow. This is that piece that was missing that wasn't right um and you know 
You just have to tell the truth. You just have to be honest with yourself first. Um, but also know when you, when you tell your truth, when you are ready, you have to be ready. But if you are with someone, if you have, if you are a woman and you are with a partner, if you're with your boyfriend or your husband or your fiance, I really encourage you to, to have a discussion as soon as you can, because you don't want to do anything that would hurt that person. Um, which is why I knew I had to have that discussion pretty soon after I had the discussion with myself about my truth. Um, and it's hard. It's really, really, really hard, but you can do it. And life is not meant to be easy. So no matter what path you take, it's going to be hard. So head down the path that feels the most real and the most true and um, what lights your soul up because it's still going to be hard. Um, but when you, when you go down that path of the one that you know is truly right for you, it's like it opens a door in your mind that goes it's like all this light comes in and you don't need validation from anybody. It's like, I don't, I feel like I don't, I don't need anybody's opinions anymore. I don't care what their opinions are because I know who I am. It's almost like a superpower, which is amazing. It gives you this joy. And um, so as hard as it is, it is totally worth it. Um, I will tell you, my ex fiance and I are still wonderful friends. He has been one of the most supportive people um, of my coming out of um, this whole year. He's just been absolutely incredible. Um, and um, I'm not going to really say much about coming out in this video. I'll say more about that um, in another video. But just know that you're not alone. Um, and when you do come out, the way I explain it to people is like, you know, and that's the thing, when you come out, a lot of people are going to say to you, well, you're not gay. You are not gay. Like maybe you're bi, bi curious or something like that. And you're like, no, I am. I am. And I love that part about myself. <laughs> okay. So you, but a lot of people are going to try and tell you you're not because they're like, you're 29. How, what you would have known by now. Uh, 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 uh. This is the thing. I believe that whoever you believe in God, the universe, um, chooses to reveal parts of yourself to you when you're ready for them. I was ready at 29 for this awakening to myself. At 13 years old, at 16 years old, even in my mid twenties, I would have never been able to handle figuring this out about myself. I don't even know how I would have responded. It definitely wouldn't have been jumping up and down in my apartment <laughs> and being so excited and being like, oh my God, I figured myself out. I figured this part of myself out. So, um, just know that, that you are shown parts of yourself when God or the universe or your, your higher self, whoever you believe in, thinks you're ready. So know that it is an amazing, amazing thing that you have figured this part out about yourself where you're coming to terms with it. Um, I think everybody should get a party when they come out. I think it is just the most magical thing um, to truly know who you are because so many people don't. So many people never figure it out. Um, but yes, it is hard. Um, it's very hard, but you can do it. Um, and if there's anybody who wants to reach out to me, um, 
I am here to listen and uh, I'm here. Um, but I knew I had to share my story because um, it's not something that you're prepared to to ever have to face sometimes. You're like, well, I, I never thought in a million years that I would have these feelings for, you know, women, but I do. And now I do. And let me tell you, I have no desire to date a guy ever again, ever. Because it's like, this is how I describe it. Um, you know, like how there's like those cute black and white movies and they're cute and they're, and they're funny and they have, they might sing and dance. But then you see La La Land, which is like my favorite movie, by the way. And La La Land is this epic, beautiful, like everything's larger than life. And there's, it's like a rainbow technicolor dream and they're singing and dancing. But then there's this story that you just connect with on another level and it makes you feel so much. And yes, while they're singing and dancing too in that old black and white movie, it's not the same thing. It doesn't make you feel like you do when you watch La La Land, you know? Um, but my sharing this story, I hope, will help you. Um, and there's just these moments, you know, where you know when you have a connection with with somebody. It's, I think, all in the eyes. It is this gaze. It is this stare. And when they stare at you, it, you know. You feel it. It's like, woo! Um, I did not wind up with that, that girl, by the way. Um, I did confess to her how I felt when I moved back across the country. I am now a yoga teacher. I am a dance teacher. And um, I love life. And uh, I am currently um, single. But, and, and of course, amid this whole like coronavirus thing hasn't really been in my favor. But when I came home, I did get on Tinder and um, I had gone on a bunch of dates and it was great and um and it was awesome and I ended up falling in love with this one girl who I did not meet on tinder it's actually someone I went to high school with um and that's like a whole other story that we're not going to get into right now but <laughs> I'll keep you updated on that but yes am I super in love with a girl right now that I went to high school with absolutely yes I am and um, she's amazing. And I hope one day we get to hop on here and share our story. Um, but I just, this is like getting way too long. But I didn't want to miss anything. And uh, I just, I, I send you all good vibes and good wishes and light and love and healing and whatever you need to help you to get through the this confusing time for you because I know how confusing it is I know how difficult it is I know the anxiety that comes with it but I also know the magic and the joy and the light that you will receive um by being honest with yourself and being honest with everybody around you. Um, I hope everybody's having a great day and I'll make some more videos. Um, and if you ha leave me any comments or, or if you have any questions for me, um, reach out to me um, and I'll make a video on anything else that you wanna know or hear about from my story. All right, bye loves.